soldier. Tell me a tale of a soldier, said the prince. And the storyteller said, I will tell you the tale of a chivalrous soldier who fights to win his lady love. And this is a story you heard in your cradle, my lord. For there was a soldier walking through the forest on his way home from the war, and his pockets were as empty as his knapsack, which was empty as his stomach. And as he was walking through the forest on the way to the city, he saw a blasted hollow oak. And standing by the blasted hollow oak was a wizened old crone. She was bent over. She was so ugly, we are told, her bottom lip hung over her breasts. And round her waist, she had a dirty, checkered apron. And she saw the soldier and she said, Ah, the young man. You look hungry to me. And he went over to her and said, Mother, have you any bread? I've been walking for a long time. I am a poor soldier coming home from the war. And she said, I have no bread, but I can give you gold. And with gold, you can buy a lot of bread. All you have to do is a small job for me. Take this rope and climb down into the tree. If you climb down into the tree, you will find a chamber underneath it, which is lit by a hundred lamps. In that chamber, you will find a... Dog. Tinder box. Oh, oh yeah. God, oh, come on. Yeah, you're <laughs> kicking yourself now, yes. You'll find a tinderbox which my mother left there. I would have it back. It has sentimental attachments. And so the soldier thought this was an easy job, so he took the rope, he tied it, and he went down, and he found himself in a chamber with a hundred... I've missed out a bit. I'll just go back. I got distracted by the shock of the tinderbox. Anyway, yes, he said, well, where do I get the gold? When do I get the gold? And she said, ah, in the chamber you will find a hundred lamps lighting your way, and you will find the tinderbox, and... There are three smaller chambers. Go into the first chamber and you will see there is a chest. That chest is full of copper coins, but it is guarded. Sitting upon the chest there is a... Oh. With eyes and round and as large as... Saucers. But take my apron, lay it out. The dog will sit upon the apron and you may take as much treasure as you wish and fill your knapsack. If you go into the next chamber, you will see another chest. This chest is filled with... Silver. But it is guarded by a... Silver. With eyes and large and round as... Silver. Ooh! No, no, no! Mill wheels. Oh. Mill wheels. But take the apron, lay it on the ground, the dog will sit on the apron, and it will not harm you. You can fill your knapsack with silver. The third chamber contains a chest, and in the chest there is... Oh. But it is guarded by a dog which has eyes as big and round as... Cartwheels! Cartwheels! Nice! It's actually round towers. Oh. Which is... A t there's a round tower in the Copenhagen. And it's the round tower in Copenhagen. So, yeah, a bit of editor's note. Um... <laughs> where were we? Yes! <laughs> but! Take my apron, lay it on the ground, the dog will sit on the apron, and you can take as much gold and fill your knapsack. So then! We're now back on track. The soldier took the rope, went down into the chamber, and he found a chamber lit by a hundred lamps, and there, surrounded by little candles, there was a plain old tinder box, but he was not interested in that. He went into the first chamber, and sure enough, there was a chest. And sitting on the chest was a... with eyes around as big as... He put the apron on the ground, the dog sat on the ground, he took the copper, and he filled his knapsack. He then took the apron and went into the next chamber, and there was a chest, guarded by a... Oh. with eyes as big and round as... Oh. And he put the... <coughs> and the dog sat on the apron, and he... He emptied the knapsack of the <laughs> copper, and he filled the knapsack with silver. <laughs> I know, and I thought that when I was doing this. I thought this really... Anyway, so he <laughs> took the apron, and he went into the next chamber, and there was a chest, and guarding the chest was a... Oh. with eyes as big as round as... <sighs> and he put the apron on the ground, and the dog sat on the apron, and he emptied the knapsack of the silver and filled the knapsack. Why didn't he just go to the... No. I don't know. <laughs> he filled the knapsack with gold, and he then went back into the chamber filled with a hundred lamps and there was something missing. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh. The rope. Ah. <laughs> he said, old woman, throw down the rope. I need to climb back. I've got the gold. And she said, yes, 
but have you got the I have now! <laughs> she threw down the rope and he climbed, climbed, climbed back up the rope and out. And then he said, Here is the. No. Oh. Tell me why. Why do you want this tinderbox? And the old woman said, Sentimental value? <laughs> And he said, no, 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 you witch, you tell me what power it holds, you tell me why you want this tinderbox, and she said, I will never tell you, he said, if you do not tell me, I will strike your head off from your shoulders, and she said, I would prefer to, <laughs> he put the tinderbox into his jacket, and left the rather messy scene, <laughs> he made his way to the city, he was a poor soldier, now he was a rich soldier, and he made his way to the city, and he suddenly was a rich soldier with a lot of friends. <laughs> and his friends told him all about the city, and told him about the life there, and he wanted to be part of the grand life of the city. They told him the stories of the king and the queen and the splendour of their palace, and the huge white tower that stood in the middle of the palace in which was imprisoned the king and queen's daughter, held there because of a prophecy that one day she would marry a poor soldier, and the king and queen kept her there for safety. <coughs> he was a rich soldier. So he spent his money on Wine, wine women, <laughs> and, song. and song, okay. He's ever looked at the traditionalist. <laughs> And soon, of course, the rich soldier was a rich soldier no longer. For he had spent every last piece of gold. And he was sitting in his rooms, waiting to be thrown out by the landlord on the last remaining piece of furniture, a stool, staring at the white tower, thinking about the princess, the prophecy that she was going to marry a poor soldier. A poor soldier? He really wanted to meet the princess. He needed to think. So he took out his pipe and put it in his mouth and felt for matches. No matches. He was reduced to wearing his old army uniform. He needed to light his pipe. And in his pocket he had a tinderbox. So he opened the tinderbox. And there was a fire steel and a flint. And he took the flint and the fire steel and he struck the fire steel again the flint, and as the spark flew, the door opened, and there, standing in the door, was a dog, with eyes as large as round as, you've got the idea, that's why the witch wanted the box. Fetch, oh, wait till I tell you, fetch the princess. The dog shot off. After a little while, it returned with the princess fast asleep, curled up on its back. The soldier looked down at the princess and he fed the daughter as they usually did. They might have locked her away in a tower, but they weren't barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> and they were interested to hear their daughter telling them about a dream she'd had where a dog carried her to a poor soldier who had placed a chaste kiss upon her forehead. A poor soldier. Just in case there's any truth in the story, the king and the queen told one of the ladies-in-waiting that she should watch the princess throughout the night. And so that is what the lady-in-waiting did. Night fell, and on the other side of the city, a poor soldier was sitting looking at the white tower, wishing he could meet the princess. So he took the fire steel and the flint, and he struck it once, twice, and as two sparks flew, the door opened, and there was... Oh. With eyes as big and round as <laughs> Fetch the princess. The dog ran off. Thank you for the little effects. <laughs> <laughs> and as the dog came back, the dog did not realise, obviously not a very keen sense of smell, that it was being followed <laughs> by the lady in waiting, who saw the dog go into a house. Of course, 
The soldier saw the princess and saw her beautiful and vulnerable and lying there. And he placed a chaste kiss upon her forehead. And then the dog took her back. Meanwhile, the lady in waiting took some chalk and marked the door with a cross. The dog, having returned the princess to the tower, came back to the soldier's lodgings. The dog saw the cross on the door. Now, at this point in the story, we are not told whether the dog had opposable thumbs. <laughs> but we are told that he took a piece of chalk and he wrote a cross on all the other doors of the street. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so. Sorry? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Something like that. Where was I? Yes! So, the next morning, when the king and the queen went to go and talk to their daughter, and they learned that she'd had the same dream, and that the lady-in-waiting had followed the dog, and that there was a cross on the door, they went down into the city with their men, their soldiers, and they stormed down the street, and of course every house had a cross on it. So they went back to the palace, and the queen resurrected her childhood sewing skills. She made a small bag to hold wheat germ, and she put on it a ribbon and tied it round her daughter's waist. And then, just as she kissed her daughter goodnight, she snipped one corner of the bag. Across the other side of the city, as the sun went down, the soldier was looking at the white tower, thinking, ah, I want to see the princess one more time. So he took his fire steel and he took his flint and he, one, two, three, and the sparks flew. One, two, three, and the door opened and there was a, oh. with eyes big around us. <sighs> Fetch the princess and the wood fetch the bread thumb. The next morning, the soldier was woken up by a hammering on the door. The soldiers were there. The trail of weak germ had been followed all the way to his door, and he was taken by the soldiers and thrown into the deepest, darkest dungeon. And from there, he went on trial for treason, for kidnapping the princess. And from there, he went to the place of execution. And as he stood under the hangman's noose, he looked at the king and the queen and the princess, and he said to the king, my lord, May I have one final request? And the king said, if it is not unreasonable, may I smoke my pipe one last time? I can see no objection, said the king. And so the soldier took his pipe and he took his fire steel and his flint and he struck it. The sparks flew, one, two, three, four. And in the middle of the crowd appeared three dogs. One with eyes as big as rounders. One with eyes as big as rounders. One with eyes as big as rounders. And the three hounds jumped on the king and queen and tore them to pieces. So the soldier could marry the princess and live happily. <laughs> And the storyteller said, you see, my lord, chivalry. <laughs> she was there. She was vulnerable. He placed a chaste kiss upon her forehead. And the prince said, he saw a woman asleep and became enamored of her. Did he talk to her? Did he know who she was, or was she simply an object? <laughs> Is that what my father thinks a real man should be? That possesses a woman as an object? And someone who should strike the head from an old woman's shoulders? and break a bargain that he has made. Oh, my father has some very strange ideas on what it is to be a real man. Come on, try again. <laughs>